go shopping. I'm at Target. Supplies. Supplies. It's Picasso as an action figure. My dad used to love this episode of Power Rangers. Sells a Riddler. All right, let's go, Jay. I'm not ready to go. Okay, that's really cool. <laughs> not for forty dollars, but that's pretty cool. Brought to you by Verizon Wireless. So this Ace Hardware used to be one of the antique stores in Reno, Nevada that I would go to as a kid and um, look for old vintage Star Wars toys, incidentally. Now it's an Ace Hardware. Just buy them all. I used to come here and there was a guy who had a booth here in the antique store right in this corner and he had the biggest collection of original 77 or 78, 79 Star Wars toys I'd ever seen and I would just come here and dream. I think he had a, an in-box original uh, TIE fighter and it was I think he wanted $27 for it when I was about nine years old. And I used to try to save my money dreaming about getting it one day, but uh, it was sold before I could save the money for it. Thanks, Ace. Uh, if you need this stuff, you can usually find it in picture hanging stores or frame stores near you. Uh, they also, of course, have it at Ace Hardware, um, and they have it in uh, f four different sizes, so, you know, we're good to go. But uh, again, like I said, this uh, Ace Hardware, when I was a kid, I grew up dear, uh, not too far away from here, and I used to walk down here when I was really young uh, with my grandmother and my dad to go look at antique stores. And um, this one was, I think, Antique Mall number two or three. They had, uh, f I think, four of them across, all across the street in Main Street, Reno. And I used to just peruse them, looking at cool things that I could try to turn into other things. Because, like I said, I've been doing that my whole life. I remember when they did a news report on this one. Uh, because it had been part of Reno for so long, but it's actually empty now. Memories. It's time to go visit an old friend, Michael. Can we put chocolate in a diorama? Tell me in the comments below. Have you ever seen such a beautiful sight? What kind of Mod Podge should you get? This one. That's it. All the other ones, forget about them. This one. <laughs> really, um, they all have different uh, minor applications and differences, but I use matte Mod, Mod Podge, this yellow label, all the time for just about everything. Gloss is really only when you need a sheen or something shiny. And I find that I can do that with other mediums that don't lay on as thick. I have one of these sizes of gloss Mod Podge and I haven't used it in two years. And I've been, I've gone through three of these, I think in the last year and a half. Um, Mod Podge is basically just glue, just so you know. It's essentially, you know, 
tacky glue or white Elmer's glue. Uh, it's just a slightly different formula, but it basically is a glue uh, that just dries a little bit quicker and uh, will, um, yeah, it'll basically serve other purposes for you. And it comes in this big tub, so you can use it for applications like adding texture to a base, which is what we're going to do with it. Something else you may not know is that epoxies do not melt open cell foam. Epoxies like this. Moving along. Rulers. So this is a T-square. They're kind of expensive, but if you plan on doing multiple dioramas over time, these are going to save you a lot of time and a lot of not straight edges if you want to invest in one. Uh, you don't have to buy it at Michael's. They have them at Walmart and some other stores, but it's definitely worth uh, the price of admission. Also, <clears throat> I like using metal rollers with a cork bottom like this. You're going to get much finer lines, and this is much flatter. And uh, also, sometimes the clear rollers are helpful because you can see what's under them. But honestly, the 12-inch and the 18-inch 18 18 metal ruler are the two things I use the absolute most to do my measuring, as well as my cutting mat. You might have the tendency to think you need to go like super expensive when you're uh, doing model paints like this on foam, but really I find you don't need to go for the price of your paints unless you're doing uh, fine miniature details on like hard lines or you're painting like a model car or something like that. Then you want to get the high quality paints that dry and go thin and then create a nice um, hard layer or something like that. Um, and you can do fine details without them getting blurred. But for our purposes, for basic weathering and coverage coating, we don't need anything expensive. Cheap paints like the ones behind me work A-OK. -okay. I use them on just about everything. And these Craftsmart paints are totally fine. And uh, I don't get too wrapped up in very specific colors unless it's maybe like grays, if I want a nice range of grays. But I'll grab you know, a mid-tone brown, a dark tone brown, um, a light tone brown, and then like multiple different grays, and then like a blue, a yellow, a red, a green, a purple, a dark green. And uh, I will custom mix most of my colors if it's for a small area. Um, if I'm doing a big area, then you might want to find a custom color in a large size that you need, but I find I can mix most of the colors I need on the spot with these cheap paints and they work just fine. And again, contrary to popular belief, you might think you need to go get expensive brushes, but for doing large swaths of dioramas or um, base ink, base coating things, or doing some simple dry brushing, you don't need expensive brushes. Unless you're doing fine detail or you're trying to do something uh, that's going to be like some type of finished artwork hanging in the gallery, don't worry about it. Value packs like these are great. I run through two or three of them a year, and uh, it's cheaper than trying to buy super expensive brushes and maintain them with these uh, cheap paints. Cheap paint, cheap brushes, a-okay. One of the things that I <laughs> uh, do a lot when I'm walking through the craft store is I peruse all of the different uh, shapes of materials. You know, you might not think looking at like girly glitter bomb stuff is worth looking at, but honestly, there's a lot there that can be used for other things later. Just look at items and think about what else could they be if they were a different color or glued onto something else. We've got these shiny sequins here. What could you put those in? Something to reflect something? Something to add some type of minor detail? What about these things? Remember these iron-on things from grade school? Look at those. Those are perfectly round, perfectly cylindrical, have a hole in them. Could they be used for capping things or adding detail to mechanical parts? This is the type of thing you think about when you stare at stuff all day. <laughs> in case you took care of your mosquito problem and now you have a pixie problem. If anybody can tell me in the comments, the best way for me to use this in a diorama with a Hot Toys action figure, and I like it, I'll do it. Yes, please. Hey, look at that. It's our old friend, Dry Foam.
Thanks, Michael. Hey, I made it on a day that they're actually open. Hooby Looby, just in case you need to pick up some seasonal. I'm always running out of seasonal. Triggered. Found another life hack. It's so tempting. Must not purchase sand value pack for those people who don't live near what we call in the industry, the outdoors. I just want you to make a note of this real quick. This is 61 pounds of sand for ten dollars 61 pounds for ten dollars all right we're like what a dollar fifty a pound dollar fifty dollar sixty two a pound something like that per sand just keep that in mind must not purchase All right, we got some fake plants for our pot. Then suddenly it was nighttime. I had to go run some errands with the mom and take care of some business and then, uh, you know, finish the shopping uh, late at night so I can go home cranky and take a big long nap. So many options, so many options. Let's see, what do we want? Ah, here we go. Spackle. Okay, so spackling paste is essentially what we're looking for for this uh, application. This is a pretty basic one. You can use this dry dex. This stuff is actually kind of helpful, especially if you're new to this because it goes on pink and dries white. And if you don't want to get into your project too soon, this stuff is good because it literally is like bright pink. Let me see if I can show you guys. See that in there? It's like Pepto-Bismol pink. And it dries white. So if you're uh, new to this and you're not sure, you can get this. It does dry pretty quick, though. It doesn't have a, a long sculpting time, I would call it. So just be aware that um, as you do this, it's going to dry fairly quick so you want to just you want to have a plan in action as you do it i don't mean quick as in like minutes i mean as in like hours it'll be dry so just know that you can't lay it down and come back like it'd be later in the day and finish doing it you know it's going to dry pretty quick so they sell this cool little kit here where you've got your little spackling paster um and your little tiny one if you're a little trepidatious you can get that for 11 bucks not a bad deal i am going to use a big tub of this stuff this is just basic stuff i'm used to using it so I'm not too worried about the, the pink and then turning white, uh, but this is just all-purpose stuff and it works great. So I use it all the time. You're gonna want something to spread the spackling paste with if you don't get a kit like that. These work just fine. They're 98 cents and they're, I think these are the two inch wide spreaders. Most applications on dioramas, you're not gonna need a bigger one than this. Although if you are gonna do a larger space, you can get yourself a three inch knife. I, you want to get one, if you're going to get a metal one, you want one that's fairly flexible uh, because you're going to want to be able to swoop and scoop with it. So the plastic is probably better uh, for the flexibility, but if you're going to go all in, nothing wrong with buying yourself a nice knife. Back to that sand question that I posed to you earlier. Let's go find some sand here.
Look at that. All purpose sand. 60 pounds for five dollars i've never seen a deal so good <sighs> the point is if you plan on doing lots and lots of dioramas or at least several large dioramas or even a few dioramas you can come here and buy 10 times as much sand for half the price. It's 8.3 cents a pound here at Home Depot, as opposed to $1.62 a pound at the craft store. Sometimes I just go down the uh, lumber aisles so I can take a big smell. Incidentally, I needed some new tape measures for work. I've been using the same 25 footer for like three years and it's Inception. Um, I've been using the same 25 footer for three years and it's getting twisted and uh, probably gonna mount somebody's blind uh, hanging at a weird angle someday. So better get some new ones. Let's see, which one do you guys think uh, is the right scale? for our diorama. I don't know. I think the no slam one's probably, probably a good fit, right? Oh, I will. It's time to check myself out at the self checkout. I did it again. I'm so proud of myself every time. <sighs> my mom always said I could do it. Check myself out. Mm. Let's drive around in the dark with the cab lights on. Do, 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 do. If you want to see some of the things that I got today used uh, in a live diorama build, go check out this video or this video. I don't know which side of the screen I put it on, um, but that is the one that I bought some of these things for. And uh, some, some of these uh, items that I purchased will be used in some future uh, produced videos, not the live stream like my miniature plants video that should be out by now, uh, you can go check that out. Some of the things that I bought today, I'm going to use those same techniques that I show you in that video to make some little baby planters. If you found this video helpful and uh, I was able to show you where to find some things that you might use in the future, uh, especially cheaper, let me know in the comments below if it helped you out. Please consider joining the channel because I got way more coming down the road and uh, I'm having a lot of fun doing this and I appreciate you for coming by. Never forget, flat paint dries fast so paint fast and dry hard have a good day ace with the place with the help of blah blah blah, blah.